Hello, in previous video we have got a very basic idea about the prolog lists, correct? Now in this video and next couple of videos we will try to solve some problems related to the prolog list so that we can get a very good idea about how to manipulate list and how to write prolog programs which involves manipulation of the prolog list and other stuff over there. Okay, so the first problem we will we will try to solve is this one so let's say we need to write a program which will determine whether a prolog object let's say atom or another list or something right is or maybe the complex term is an element of a list of an another list okay so something like if you are aware about any other programming language so it is something like the member of function right so we generally have for the arrays right so so let us try to see how we can we can solve this particular problem in prolog so, but before that let us try to reason through the solution first and then maybe we will try to write this program so for that if i just think about in a very technical way we are basically trying to write something like this one probably we will send a query to prolog something like this one let's say member I could, it could be any name okay uh, member x and l where x would be a prolog object and l will be a prolog list so the prolog needs to send me or basically reply to me like true or false whether it's a true or false over there correct so how can we achieve that so let us try to see it pictorically over here so this could be my array right a list of this could be my list not array let's let's talk about in prolog term itself so this could be my list prolog list right where the elements are a b c d and e now let's say i have a prolog object a simple object called c so now we need to determine whether c belongs to this particular list or not right so i am using some mathematical notation you can ignore it this is something like the belongs to operator over here it does not have any other special meaning so so our job is to find whether c is belongs to this guy over here so now there could be numerous solution numerous way to approach this particular problem right so let us talk about a very simplistic way so what if we can take we can basically loop through if, if there is any way we can do it in prolog because we need to think about in prolog terms as well so if we can loop through this particular list and take one by one element and compare it with C, probably we will get at the third attempt, we will get like uh, it is matching and then we can easily tell C is belongs to this particular list, right? Something like this one. Let's say we pick up A. Now when we pick up A, we will try to basically we will make that A pop out from this particular list and we will try to basically create another list basically we are dividing this whole list into two list one is the first element another is the other four elements here okay then what i'll do is i'll compare with c if it is matching then we are fine currently it is not matching so then what i'll do is i'll take b b from this particular list because now i am forgetting about a whatever remaining list i have so basically i am taking the first element again correct so basically i am taking element by element from here again whenever i am taking b i am dividing this set into two parts first element rest of the elements here then comparing the first element with c again we are not matching then again we will try to break this one so let's say this time we will break c and d e something like this way correct so now when we try to match it matches correct so the, our search will be finishing over there the prolog goal will be finishing over there correct so this could be an approach we can we can think of now now see it very very carefully over here right so this this guy over here this guy a how we get that we basically divided this list into two parts the first part and the other parts now if you see the previous video i have created for the prolog list this is exactly we do when you use the pipe operator right we have divided the list into a head 
and a tail over there correct so somewhere it is sticking like something we can do it over here similarly this list also we have divided into a head and a tail over here so every time we are basically dividing this tail to become a head and another tail then say and then again this tail we are dividing into head and another tail until we are having a match over here okay so so let's see how we can write this in a in a in a prolog program so one thing is clear like we need to use that pipe operator to achieve our goal okay that's the first thing second thing is we need to have a we are going to send the query something like this one in prolog right so so that means we need we need to have something in our prolog program which will basically definitely send true or false over there right so how can we achieve that maybe we we, we can achieve that with a fact so let us try to write a program over here now let's say i am writing something like this one so first thing is there is a fact needed because we do not have any kind of knowledge base over here right we will need to create that knowledge base as well so there is a fact needed let's say i am writing something like member now in the member as i said we need to pass two things one object another is a list so let's say i am passing an variable x over here which could take any values over here then an array something like h that the pipe operator tell okay i'm finishing it off then dot so now this is a fact okay now this will be become a fact if i put a x over here so what i am essentially saying is whatever object i am passing it as if the object is part of the head of that particular list it should return me a true so let us try to see that whether this is working or not i'll compile okay now once the make is done you can see it over here like it is telling me something like singleton variable t which we will fix that later stage but at least we have written our initial fact over there the initial line of our program over there right so now let's see what if i just post a query something like this one member a so i'm just trying to test it out whatever we have written it over here right a and if i just give a list called a comma b comma c here okay and i give a dot over here so it is telling me true over here that means because we have written something like whether a particular input element see if i just bring out the code over here whatever i am trying to say is how prolog will say it's true because we have passed a over here to this particular variable right so prolog instantiated with x equals to a now we have passed in list over here a b c so this is what over here when prolog applies this pipe operator so a will become my x over here and b and c b comma c will become my tail over here correct so it is able to match both of these things as a over here that's why it is returning me true over here so it is satisfying its goal over here but think about this one if i write member if i write something like this one member instead of a if i pass b over here what will happen so what will happen it is returning me false now because it applies the same rule it did not find b as the head of this list so it's basically giving us false over here right so now we at least able to program the part where we were comparing with the head if you remember the ppt i have shown you over there right so you are always comparing with the head of the list and that head if it is able to match it should return me a true otherwise it should return me a false so that we are able to achieve it over here now the most complex part is how i can break the tail to get single element each time okay and then do a match again so for that i can write so if you if you are seeing it over here we need to loop through again right so and and if you remember in this particular prolog playlist 
I have talked about how to define a prolog rule recursively over here. So it is a, there is a recursion over here, right? So we will be going to you. We are going to use the similar concept over here as well. This is how we can write. First, let me write it down. Then we can we can reason through it. If I am writing something like this one, member, I am passing again a variable, my variable x. Now this time, I'll pass h, then t, h pipe, then t over here. Okay, and I will specify a rule. So whenever I am querying this one, my rule will be m e m b e r. I will try to call this member again with x but this time i will send as t over here okay as a this one so let's reason through this one how this will be working so now now prolog has two statements in our program we have two things over here one is this fact over here another is this rule over here right so now let's let me reason through it now if i just Okay, first let me show you that when it works, I'll make it great. Now it is talking. Now it is basically complaining about two singleton variable t and h. We will fix that later. But let us at least try to see whether our b is working or not. Now this time, if you see it, it returns me true over here. So how come it do that? So let us reason through it. So we passed x as b. So prolog will instantiate x as b over here. So now the first thing is it has this particular fact over here, right? So as I as we discussed before, according to this rule, according to if when we try to apply this one to find out whether b is part of head or not, so it got false over here. So then it moved to the next one over here, right? So in the next one. What we are doing it, we are basically taking, we are basically calling this guy over here, right? So, but while calling it, we are only passing the tail over here. And if you see, this guy is actually, while we are passing the tail, we are actually omitting the head element over here, correct? So, again, what will be happening because of this one, it is going to call the first line again, right? So, it got a new goal over here. So, that means it will try to see whether b is a part of b and c or not because b and c will be comprised as tail over here or not so now this time this second b will become the head over here as we have seen our ppt right so that time that's why it will be, be returning me true over here okay so that's the reason it was able to do it and that's the reason we need these two lines over here the first line actually is making sure uh, whether a particular element is part of head or not the second line is actually making sure to break the tail, to recurse through the tail elements and break it down as a head and another tail. Then call this one again to compare with the head element over here again. Okay. So our program is ready. This is very concise and very elegant program over here if you see it. But it is complaining about two things. One is a singleton variable t. Another is singleton variable h. Because this t and h was not used anywhere over here, correct? So it prolog is actually instantiating these two variables, but it was not used anywhere over here. So instead of t and h, what we can do is we can use the anonymous variable over here as well, correct? We have seen this before in the list introduction video, not this one. So instead of h, I can use anonymous variable because I, I am not caring about what prolog will instantiate these guys over here because I'm not going to use them in our program, correct? So if I compile, make it, okay? So now if you see those two errors are gone now. Now, and, and it should behave in the same way, whatever we did it, right? So it should be B is a part of element over here. Now, let's say if I give another query, something like Z, where z is a part of this list or not it will say false now let us reason through this one as well so now according to the whatever discussed we discussed before so it will always try to compare z with a 
then again try to break the second list with b and c right z with b and z with c over here now when it did not find anything over here at the end of all this iteration it will find the empty list over here right now we have discussed this before in the list introduction video the empty list do not have any kind of tail and head and tail concept right because empty list we cannot break it down further so that's where prolog will stop and tell me it is false over here okay it will not run through infinite loop over here because of that concept called that empty list do not have any kind of head and tail concept over there okay now let's let's see it let's see another query over here if let's say instead of instead of any particular element if i pass x over here as a variable and okay i can i can i think get it from here itself instead of z i can pass x over here and try to see what prolog is returning me now because till that time till this time it is actually returning me true and false over here right if i do that now it will try to assign x equals to a because we are passing a variable over here correct and if i get all the possible combinations x equals to b and x equals to c over here so it will return me actually the list of elements we have in our list as well correct so this is handy in, in both way as well so hopefully we got a good idea about how to manipulate prolog list and how to write a very short program using this this, this concept over here how to basically break down the prolog list and try to access its element wise probably we will take another example as well in the next video okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video